A Boeing 747 crashed on final approach in Madrid, Spain. The 1983 disaster of Avianca Flight 11 is one of the deadliest to involve a Boeing 747. The photographed wreckage of the plane showed a devastating scene with barely anything resembling an airplane. The accident raised a lot of questions, as the 747 was the most iconic plane in the skies, and this particular plane was flown by some of the airline's best pilots. Unfortunately, the subsequent investigation would later find a causal factor for the disaster to be in the actions of the flight crew in the flight's final moments. So what happened here that led to such devastation? Avianca is the national carrier of the South American country of Colombia. Avianca, in 1983, flew a transatlantic route between Bogota and Europe. Avianca Flight 11, the accident flight of discussion today, was the return flight to Bogota, which originated in Frankfurt, Germany. The 747 would first make stopovers in Paris and Madrid before crossing the Atlantic to South America, making one more stop in Caracas, Venezuela before Bogota. Flight 11 left Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport at 10.25 p.m. on the evening of November 26, 1983. On board were 192 occupants, 169 passengers and 23 crew. On the flight deck for this leg to Madrid were three pilots. 58-year-old Captain Tulio Hernandez had been with Avianca for 32 years, becoming one of Avianca's best pilots. As a veteran pilot, he had accumulated over 23,000 flight hours, with over 2,500 of those in the 747. His first officer was 36-year-old Eduardo Ramirez. Despite being considerably younger than his captain, he still had substantial experience having served 10 years at the airline. He was still somewhat new to the 747, however. The third member of the flight crew was 57-year-old flight engineer Juan Laverde. Much like the captain, he too was highly experienced. He was the most experienced on the 747, though by the time of the accident, he had accumulated nearly 16,000 total flight hours. Avianca Flight 11 cruised at 37,000 feet. According to the accident report, the recovered cockpit voice recording began playing at 11.26 p.m., revealing nothing amiss on the flight deck. For a period of around 15 minutes, they tried to contact the airline's operations center in Bogota. Unable to do so, instead they were able to contact the carrier's operations in Madrid to transmit communications between the plane and the company. As the 747 was approaching the descent phase of the flight, the crew selected the frequency to pick up the VOR at Madrid. At 11.46, Avianca Flight 11 begins the descent down into the Spanish capital. It was cloudy that evening in Madrid. When the pilots contacted the ground for weather information, it was reported back to them that visibility was 8 kilometers with mist in the air, though the winds were calm. The flight appeared routine and recorded conversations would seem to indicate a relaxed, casual atmosphere on the flight deck. Notably, the pilots were making conversations unrelated to the flight. Still, the pilots navigated through their multiple waypoints, descending down to 9,000 feet as cleared. Air traffic control in Madrid cleared Avianca 11 for an approach onto runway 33. Madrid Barajas is a huge airport in the modern day. In 1983, it mostly consisted of the southern area of the airport which stands there today. At the time, there were two runways in use, runway 36 and 33 which intersect at this point. Once receiving their approach instructions, the pilots would have consulted their paper charts. The accident report details out the instrument approach chart for ILS-33 at Madrid. Avianca Flight 11 was cleared to fly to the Charlie Papa Lima VOR. Presumably, the pilots would intercept the ILS lining up with the runway some several miles out, just like many other planes would have done earlier that evening. The time was now just after midnight, the date having now gone into the morning of November 27th. The pilots were on frequency with Madrid Tower. Flight 11 continued their descent as normal, 
and the Madrid Tower controller cleared the flight for landing on runway 33. This was the last contact between the plane and air traffic control. Configuring their plane for landing, the flight crew extended the flaps as needed and lowered the landing gear. From this heading, the pilot flying needed to turn the plane to the right once reaching this ground-based navigational aid. To be established on the localizer, they would need to turn to a heading of roughly 330. On this evening, however, the pilot flying actually turned the plane short of when they were supposed to. They were expected to make this turn once passing this VOR beacon, but instead made a small turn beforehand. This did not line the 747 up with the runway. Instead, it had only deviated them from where they should have been. At the time of disaster, the recorded heading was 284 degrees. Without realizing their error, the pilots of Avianca 11 continued their approach none the wiser. The Boeing 747 was fast approaching the side of a hill southeast of Madrid Airport. Inevitably, the onboard ground proximity warning system on the 747 sounded in the cockpit. This alarm is there to tell pilots that they are dangerously close to terrain and to take immediate action. The captain, the pilot flying, did not take any action when this alarm sounded, allowing the plane to continue its descent. The pilots had now flown into an area where they were now below the safe margins of altitude given the nearby terrain. The captain disconnected the autopilot to take manual control of the aircraft and without acknowledging the severity of the ground proximity warning system alarm that sounded just 9 seconds earlier, and without seeing the airport or the runway. The Boeing 747 descended below 3,000 feet. Just moments later, the first of multiple impacts with terrain would occur at an altitude of precisely 2,242 feet. The time was recorded to be exactly 6 minutes and 19 seconds after midnight. The rightmost number 4 engine struck the hillside, as did part of the plane's undercarriage. The right wingtip struck the top of a small tree, tearing off part of the right wing. In this instant, the pilots lost whatever control they had of the plane, though for a brief time, the 747 bounced and continued on for roughly another 250 meters before the second impact. It is suggested in the flight data recorder's data that engine power was increased, perhaps an attempt by the flight crew in this moment to save the plane, realizing that something was terribly wrong. The second impact occurred just three seconds later on a different hill. The 747 was still in motion as it again continued on before a third impact would occur five seconds after the second on another hill. This final third impact with terrain occurred a further 320 meters ahead. This time, the right wing was severely damaged. The lower level of lift on the side of the plane, according to the accident report, caused the aircraft to roll into an inverted state. The 747 crashed into the hillside, completely obliterating the aircraft. The crash of Avianca 11 left a scene of total devastation. Photographs by the investigation demonstrated that fact. 181 people on board the plane were killed. There were, however, 11 survivors. All of those who survived needed urgent medical treatment, but they were alive. The Spanish investigation labeled the accident as pilot error, specifying a major navigational error, which took the large plane into terrain. The investigation also highlighted a deficiency in teamwork among the pilots. Criticism was also directed at air traffic control, saying that the controllers were not as vigilant as they should have been and did not tell the pilots of Flight 11 that radar service had been terminated. In the investigation's recommendations, it was recommended that flight crews maintain the use of language outlined by the International Civil Aviation Organization and avoid ambiguous terminology. It is reiterated that air traffic controllers must also strictly follow their rules and procedures. The same was given to pilots. Flight 11 was the deadliest air disaster to occur at Avianca. The airline still operates routes between Bogota and Europe and has become one of the largest airlines in South America. Late 1983, 
was certainly not kind to Madrid in the area of aviation disasters. On December 7th, just 10 days after the crash of Avianca Flight 11, a runway collision occurred involving a Boeing 727 and a DC-9, killing 93 people. We'll look at this incident though in its own video later this year. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video to be interesting, be sure to be subscribed as Saturday is the upload day for the channel and there will be another video next week. This is the section of the video where I take a moment to thank my patrons for the amazing support. The Patreon perks will be changing from the video going out on March 5th, the start of the next month. We usually do a shout out to all the 5 and £10 tier patrons, but this list has gotten rather long, so it will now be shortened to just the new patrons from the beginning of next month, so there is a bit of time before that change comes into effect. And it's totally expected that some patrons may want to adjust their patronage accordingly. Anyway, a thank you to the £5 tier patrons, Adventures of Stupid, Alice Lutris, Avery Tioda, Baku82, Barlavon, Chilhelm, Hunter Heilman, Hector Palmatellas, Jennifer Frakadic, Joey, John Ambrosia, KTP123, Ken Zachman, Kenneth Morins, Len, Leon Sanjenning, Lizzie Wizzy Let's Get Busy, Marie Ennis, MG, Michelle, Mom Left Me at Best Buy, MX Coyfish, Pac-Man 7, Panic Chicken, Pedro Cruz, Rebecca Rivers, Rez, Rio Whitley, Saria Melody, Sir Wuffleton, Travis Olexa, Tristan Kriegsman, and Tyra Wynn. And of course, a big thank you to the very generous 10 pound tier patrons, Ada Montgomery, Anne Sid, David Dabrowski, Derek Bean, Epsilon, Karma, Magaseal, Meg Milton, Roger Mayer, SoFP, Steve Cottrell, Thick Coconut, Trans Rights Baby, Vapronva, and Where Are My Cheetos? Thank you all so much for watching, and that is it from me for this week. I hope you have a good weekend, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.